guys welcome back to my channel Simone here and today I'm doing a very exciting video and it is my first ever collab video and I am doing a collaboration with Emma from Emma Rose the YouTube channel I will link her channel down below I love her so much I think she's very funny she makes some of the best YouTube videos that I've watched um, and yeah I really really enjoy her channel and we decided to do a collaboration uh, where we both talk about one star reviews from Goodreads um, about our favourite five star books and um, so I'm going to make this video and she's also going to make one I will also link her video for you down below but so when you finish watching mine go over and check out hers and send her some love and tell her I sent you um, yeah I'm so happy I've got a few more collabs coming up but I'm so so honoured to be able to uh, collaborate with Emma so thank you so much to you Emma because I'm very excited so I have five books that I have given five stars that I've loved and I'm not gonna lie I'm hoping I find it difficult to find one stars but I feel like that's probably not the case so the first one I'm going to do is Educated by Tara Westover which you may know was my favorite book of 2018 and I'm a little bit nervous about this I have my computer right in front of me so if I start looking at the screen too much I'm sorry about that but I have to read them out but I will react and respond to these comments so the first one says one star it's a hard thing I don't understand and they got a free book from NetGalley as well how very sad okay right it says I sat on this one for a bit as it took me a little while to decide how to put my thoughts together and write a review for this one I really struggled I read educated with a group of my sisters and for the most part we all struggle with parts of this book I just don't understand how everybody could struggle I mostly struggled with how the book was written and I didn't feel it was written with compassion and emotion I didn't connect with Tara Westover because it felt very one-sided to me and it didn't feel like we were told the whole story I felt like she was only telling us the side she wanted us to know. For that reason, I struggle with the credibility of this story. Okay, it's a memoir or an autobiography about somebody's life. So they're not going to tell you all the different sides because it's from their own perspective. So I'm going to be honest and say I struggle with that. Like, surely the whole point is that she's telling her life and her perspective and how she dealt with it. Now, maybe some of the bits in her earlier life potentially were a little bit embellished or maybe a bit... Um, over exaggerated but she was very young at the time when it happened so from her perspective that's maybe what happened um, and I think she does very well uh, she puts footnotes in the bottom and at the back of the book it does tell you that she is aware that some of the things that she remembers her brothers and her other family members remember differently so I don't think she's shying away from that I think she's very much just saying kind of what she remembers and how she remembers it and maybe that is a bit different than kind of the credible story I also don't think everybody's life is credible in that way like I think sometimes things happen that are completely unbelievable but are actually true so I don't know I don't necessarily agree with that I really wanted to connect with Tara Westover and understand her journey and be inspired by her achievements but for the most part it felt forced on me to feel for her instead of being inspired by her achievements. I mean personally I felt very inspired by her achievements. I think she's an amazing woman and she did an amazing thing and I feel myself getting very defensive. <laughs> Sorry guys this is not supposed to be a ranted video. Also if you don't like the books I like of course that's fine um, but I'm allowed to disagree with you right? Is that not the case? I don't know. Uh, many people overcome heartbreaking odds and have inspiring stories to tell. Tara Westover's story just didn't feel that way for me. I mean, that's fine. You're entitled to your opinion. I completely disagree with you and I think she was an, she's an amazing woman and she's done amazing things. And honestly, if I lived the life that she'd lived, I don't think I'd be where she is now. So personally, I think she's very inspiring and I disagree with you, Brenda. I'm very, very sorry. So the next one I'm doing is Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeymoon. Another one of my favourite books from the year. Let us find out who hated it and why. <laughs> and I feel like I might cry. Okay, so the first one is a DNF, which to me, you can't give a one star review and DNF. Anyway, read few chapters, couldn't stand the characters and the way the book is written was so pretentious and no one speaks like that in real life. I don't agree with you at all. Like, do you speak, have you spoken to lots of people? Like, that's not the case at all. Um, yeah, no, I didn't like that. I don't agree. I don't think it's pretentious. I thought it was very well written and I thought Ellen Oliphant was a brilliant character who was, to me, very true to life and I saw myself in her a lot. 
Next up is This Is Going To Hurt by Adam Kay, which again was one of my favourite books of 2018. Another DNF one, oh, this is really annoying me, <laughs> says unpopular opinion, this was a DNF for me. I went into this book not really knowing what to expect, so it probably shouldn't come as a complete surprise then that I didn't finish it. I think this book sums up why I never went into medicine, and in order to survive in the medical world, you need to detach yourself from some pretty horrific things. I completely agree, I personally wouldn't, I work in a pharmacy, and the idea of going into like, as a doctor medicine, I would not do that now. One of the um, guys that I work with at work, or used to work with us, is now doing a medical um, degree and I ha hats off to him because honestly I could not do that. Kay describes mortality in a very glib way which I suppose is accurate coming from a doctor who deals with death on a regular basis. To me though life is more sacred than that and someone's relative slash loved one who has just died is briefly commented upon and then overshadowed by something which is crude and vulgar. Having read the first section of the book, life is deemed as cheap, which is something I'm not comfortable with since I have a morbid fear of death, so I didn't appreciate this aspect. I can completely understand that. It was very much glib and very much sort of breezed over, but I do agree kind of with what she was saying that as a doctor or as somebody that's had to deal with a lot of death around them, I feel like he probably has to be like that in order to it for it not to be completely soul destroying. And I also think he probably just doesn't want to depress himself even further. So yeah, for me, I can completely understand where they're coming from, but I think that's kind of that's the nature of the book that you're reading, I guess. So yeah, maybe that's why you don't like it. Uh, furthermore, there are too many crude references for my liking. Kay focuses far too much on the downstairs, and I'm not sure whether he finds some of these witty, but they fall far short of the mark for me. I'm not going to lie, that's kind of my humour, so I find it hilarious. I'm not impressed by routine mentions of the word ring piece. <laughs> I'm sorry, obviously, I have no issue with that. Or how medical professionals refer to obs and gyne, aka brats and twats. <laughs> I mean, I get it, but like, this is... They have to laugh or they cry, honestly. Sometimes in the pharmacy we have similar things and it can be difficult to like distance yourself and I get it. I'm sorry, it makes me laugh, it's my humour. Again, to me this reads as really juvenile and immature humour. Yes, but that's funny. Cheap laughs from those who don't actually have a good sense of humour. I mean, who are you to say what is a good sense of humour or not? It doesn't surprise me in the least. Since I liaise with this sector of people, my levels of respect for them have really plummeted. I mean that's up to you. I didn't enjoy this book at all, the humour just wasn't funny, the way it was written sounded like the author was trying way too hard to impress the reader at times, I just couldn't gel with it. I can completely understand that but I will say because you didn't finish the book, if you'd read the end you, it might have changed your mind. I know he was very crude and he was very humorous in parts and maybe that's not for you but the ending, if you read the ending it's very much on the nose, it's very kind of emotional and I think that maybe you'd have seen a different side of it so I mean you didn't finish it so how are, you, how are you going with that? How, that? how did that work for you? Then I'm going to talk about Geekerella by Ashley Poston, which I really enjoyed, but it was a surprise enjoy for me. I didn't think I was going to love it, and I did, so yeah, let's get started with that one. Okay, so this there is actually not that many one-star reviews for this one, which I'm quite surprised by, actually, because I feel like it's kind of a polarising book. But it says, This was painful. To start with, the writing felt very stilted to me. There was no easy flow. It read quite awkwardly, I thought. The main characters in the book all had a sort of pantomime-esque vibe going on that also really didn't work for me. I think that that was kind of what I liked about it, the fact that it was kind of pantomime-esque, I guess, because it was exaggerated, but it also had the humour and it had the emotion in it, which I enjoyed. Um, I don't think the writing for me was stilted at all. I really enjoyed the writing. Uh, this was supposed to be a contemporary, right? Therefore, you'd think that's, that some realism was required. I mean, I think, to me, it was very realistic. And overall, it was just an incredibly Im unimaginative retelling of a time-honoured classic. It followed the fairy tale to a fault, and therefore, instead of breathing new life into the Cinderella story, it just felt boringly predictable. Personally, I thought it was a very updated version of Cinderella. Yes, okay, the storyline is exactly the same, but then it's a retelling. Um, it's not a reimagining, it was a retelling, that was the point of it. Um, but for me, it was modern and it had all the different, like, it had cosplay and it had technology, it had all different things, and I felt like that really brought it to life in a much more updated fashion, personally. Such a shame. This sounded like it could have been super cute, but that's one of the biggest problems with fairy tale retellings, I guess. How close do you go to the source material? This one was much too close, and then even the slight differences felt jaded. Uh, this novel felt like fan fiction of the film Once Upon a a Cinderella story. I don't know, maybe Cinderella is just too well known. Maybe, but I feel, feel like, I don't know, I really enjoy, I, I don't agree with that. 
This book needed a twist, something to make it stand out, perhaps something to make it a little grittier and have less of the over-the-top ridiculousness with the characterisations of the main characters. Sadly, as I said before, it was just so freaking dull. I disagree. <laughs> I'm probably just too old for this. Time to just forget this and move on to my next read. I don't think that you can be too old for a book. I don't like that. Um, and uh, I don't know. Maybe you just this wasn't for you, probably. I personally, like I said, really, really enjoyed it. I'm sorry I'm looking at my computer all the time. Like, I've realised this is quite a not looking at the camera kind of a video. But you know what? It's just the way it is. And then the final one I'm going to do is Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. I wasn't going to do a Harry Potter one, but then I was like it's your favourite books of all time so why would you not pick your favourite Harry Potter book? I feel like I'm probably going to be very angry about whatever this says. I picked Order of the Phoenix because I think universally it tends to be the least liked one just because um, it's very different than the rest. I personally, this is one of my favourites but I do understand why people don't particularly love it all the time. But let's have a look. This has 10,000 one star reviews. I mean I feel, I feel personally offended about that. Anyway, are we ready? Okay. One star. This is my least favourite of the Harry Potter series and almost borders on the don't bother. <laughs> Why would you not read a Harry Potter book? It's saved only by the virtue that it is a Harry Potter book and moves the series along to the still yet unknown finale. I mean, it does do that, but it's also great in itself. My issues with it. Okay, here we go deals with complex social political problems in a simplified extreme and dichotomous manner. I'm not going to lie, I don't know what dichotomous means, but it is simplified and extreme and I think it's that for a reason, it's not meant to be realistic, so I get it. Characterizations are too easy or lazy, all good or all bad with the exception of Snape whose good slash evil intentions are yet unknown, all courageous or cowardly, the righteous or the corrupt. I don't believe that's true, I think if you look at, um, I do think that's true because if you look at Mundungus Fletcher, who's primarily in this one uh he is it Mundungus Fletcher? Mundungus yeah he is uh I would say good and bad he's on the good side but he does bad things so I don't agree that there's only good or bad I think that everybody in this like I think Harry could even be bad in some times because of his kind of negativity in this so I'm personally I don't agree with that Malfoy Jr is the most incompetent nemesis in the history of evil <laughs> And while this was acceptable in the earlier books where there was an element of the comical in his attempts to be evil, by book five where the themes have become significantly darker, he and his sidekicks' unchanging and inane attempts to foil Harry's ultimate fate have just become annoying. The only saving grace is that Harry has more than enough true and worthwhile enemies and obstacles for the reader to really get bogged down by Malfoy's silliness. I can understand that. I do think Malfoy, I mean he's not evil but then I don't think he's supposed to be, I think he's on the cusp of like good and evil and I think he's trying to be the same as his dad and he's finding it difficult and I think that's like it's a legacy thing there I think you're supposed to think well he should be like his dad but obviously he's struggling and I don't necessarily think that that's a bad thing I think it's an interesting exploration of um parental responsibilities and um childhood responsibilities the plot seems confused as if jk rowling has all these ideas but is unsure of where she ultimately wants to go thereby leaving in all these subplots that neither has entertainment wisdom nor story advancing value example what's with grop and the freaking giants i love grop what are you talking about um i do think jk rowling had lots of ideas but she's written an entirely new wizarding world like an entirely new world and obviously she's trying to bring everybody in and it's a lot of characters that she's dealing with so personally I think she did it well and I do love Grop so don't be trying to kick them out of the book. Overall read it only as a part of the greater goal of coming closer to the ending of the series. I don't think this was a filler book. If it was a filler book it's a blooming massive filler book. I mean what is it like 900 pages? I personally think what Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix is one of my favourites. I know a lot of people don't like it and I did want that's why I kind of wanted to do this one as the one star but yeah so uh yeah disagree there you have it guys that that is my reading one star reviews of my favorite books um like i said go and check out emma's video that she's done i will link that video down below and i'm very excited to be able to collaborate with her so thank you so much to everybody um who does go over there um give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel and emma's bye guys